This is the medical patient assessment station. In this station, the one thing to keep in mind is that the patient will not physically respond to any of your questions. They will all come from either the examiner, the instructor, or the instructor assistant. In this station, you will not need stethoscopes, blood pressure cuffs, or anything to that nature. Everything will be provided to you by the examiner at the appropriate time. In the station, you must remember that anything you do not ask of the patient or do not ask for, you will not be provided with that information. So the station, as I said, will commence with the examiner reading a brief scenario. You are dispatched for a four-year-old male patient complaining of shortness of breath. Please stand by and turn on the scene. So the station first starts with scene safety, BSI for myself and my partner. Scene is safe. And I'm going to introduce myself to my patient by getting on my patient's level. Hi, sir. My name is Dean. I'm an EMT with National EMS. What seems to be the problem today? I can't seem to catch my breath. So now that I have the patient's chief complaint, my patient is talking to me, I actually know that my patient's level of consciousness, if the patient is conscious and alert, we also know that his airway, because we do have to assess the airway breathing circulation, he has a patent airway. He has a patent airway. He is alert and oriented times four. At this moment, we are going to assess the patient's breathing, looking for rate, rhythm, quality, tidal volume, and equal chest rise. 22, rapid and shallow. At this moment, because my patient is having a chief complaint of difficulty breathing, we will apply oxygen at 15 liters by a non-rebreather mask. The patient does accept it. Next, we're going to assess the patient's circulation, checking the radial pulse, looking for rate, rhythm, and quality. The patient's pulse is 120, rapid and strong. And we'll follow this up by assessing the patient's skins for color, temperature, and condition. The patient is cyanosis around the lips, and he also has sweaty coming from his head and warm. This time we'll make our patient decision. Because my patient is having difficulty breathing, we are going to determine that this is a high priority patient, priority one, and we will either update or request ALS to the scene. ALS is in room. At this moment, it's time to begin our secondary assessment of the patient, beginning by history taking using OPQRSTI and sample histories. So sir, what were you doing when all of this began? I was sweeping the floor. Okay. Does any position you get into or anything you do make it better or make your breathing worse? Nothing makes it better. Everything seems to make it worse. Okay. How would you describe the quality of your breathing? If you could describe it, how would it be? Can't get any air in. Okay. Are you experiencing any pain or discomfort associated with your difficulty breathing? I do not. Okay. On a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the hardest to breathe and one being very easy, where would you rate your breathing? Seven, I had a similar episode like this multiple years ago. At a seven? Seven. Seven, okay. And how long has this been going on for? The last 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes? Have you taken anything prescribed or over the counter to assist to alleviate the problem? I have not. You have not. Moving into our sample history, Besides the difficulty breathing, are you experiencing any other issues or any other concerns or symptoms? I am not. Allergies, are you allergic to any foods, anything in the environment, or any medications? I'm allergic to penicillin. Do you require the use of an epinephrine auto injector for that medication? I do not. Or for that allergy? All right, are you currently taking any, medica any medications, uh, also recreational drugs, supplements, any kind of medications at all? I take a Tylenol and I also take an MDI Adderall. Okay, you have an MDI, what was it? Albuterol. Albuterol, okay. Have you used that medication today? I have not, I'm not sure how to use it. You're not sure how to use the inhaler? Okay, fair enough. Do you have any pre-existing medical problems or conditions? I have hypertension and asthma. Hypertension and asthma, okay. When was the last time you ate or drank anything? I had uh, lunch, it's now about one o'clock. Okay. And so, what were you doing when this started? You said? I was sweeping up a room that was full of dust. Okay. Sweeping the room was full of dust and then you started with your difficulty breathing. It's been going on for approximately 30 minutes. You have not used your medication, your inhaler for this. No, went outside, okay. got some fresh air. Okay, so at this moment, we're gonna do a quick physical examination of the patient. 
If we felt it were necessary, we could palpate the patient's chest. If we thought there might be trauma related, here it was probably not. Definitely going to want to auscultate the lung sounds and the apices and the bases. Also on the posteriors, apices, the mids, and the bases. What are my lung sounds? You have wheezing throughout. Wheezing in all fields. At this moment, we're going to obtain the remainder of our baseline vital signs. We want to obtain our blood pressure. Blood pressure is 140 over 70. And we want to consider also obtaining the pulse oximeter reading. It's at 93%. As well as pupil act, uh, reactivity. They're equal and reactive. Okay. So at this moment, we have determined that this patient is possibly having an asthma attack due to the underlying history. <clears throat> we are going to want to consider administering the uh, albuterol meter dose inhaler. In order to do this, we are going to ask to see the patient's medication. He supplies it for you. We're going to inspect the five rights, right patient, right medication, right dosage, right route, right date and time. All seems to be in check. At this moment, we're going to contact medical control and request permission to administer the inhaler. Medical control said go ahead and do so. He follows with any protocols. Okay. We are now going to take the inhaler, shaking it and describing to or explain to our patient how we're going to do this. So, sir, I'm going to give you this inhaler. I'm going to ask you to fully exhale. On my, uh, you let it form a seal around the mouthpiece with your mouth. On my count of three, you will take a deep breath in. As you're breathing in, I will depress the trigger to release the medication. Once you have fully inhaled, I'm going to ask you to hold your breath for up to 10 seconds or however long as you can, and then slowly exhale, um, and then we're going to repeat another puff. Okay? So we give the patient the medication. One, two, three, breathe. Medications on board. Patient accepted medication without okay. issues. Is ALS on scene? ALS is about five minutes out of stuff. So at this moment, we're going to prepare this patient for transport, move the patient down into the uh, ambulance or load them into the ambulance, immediately begin transporting. Priority one will arrange to intercept with ALS. During the transport, we are going to reassess or perform our ongoing assessment by reassessing the patient's vitals his condition and our interventions every two to five minutes and continue with an ongoing assessment. And at this point, the station is complete.